let's pull up some slides let's talk about the week um crazy times crazy times this week right strange days indeed yeah three cheers for no fears everybody was scared a week ago 10 days ago you thought the world was ending for sure now no nobody cares yep oh. <laughs> flip them over <laughs> let's move ahead to the next slide NASDAQ uh, is, was up five days in a row before this is before today. So this is all as of last night. OK, <laughs> NASDAQ five days in a row uh, uh, on pace for the best week since November 22. Best week uh, in for the Dow Jones and SPX in over a year. Uh, tightening financial conditions give Fed the room to pause. They didn't do anything right. Mm -hmm. Not my payroll, of course, just came out this morning. I, I lied. This is the one thing from this morning. But uh, weaker than expected, we see yields pulled back. We see dollar pulled back. Bank of England, even though they have no business pausing, they paused because Fed is doing it, and so is ECB, and, and their inflation's way higher in the UK, and they played down the idea of rate cuts, which, by the way, we're going to start hearing a lot about rate cuts. Ain't no doubt about it. It's all everybody's going to talk about, even though we're not going to—I don't, I don't see how we do that anytime really next year, but, you know, they're going to talk about it, and everybody's already putting it at June and July— uh, and then we've seen the 10-year Treasury yield drop 30 point basis points this week on top of another probably 10 basis points a day. And then VIX and VVIX both dropped back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, the six, I'm sorry, both dropped back to six-week lows. So what does all this mean? What does all this mean? It means we're never going to see a rate hike again, probably, right? <laughs> well, based on bonds trading 114 and a half right now, probably not. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, right? And so, uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. Is it, are bonds going to be linear going back up from here? Probably not. We're, we're probably going to be a little, uh, you know, a little roller coastery. But, uh, I mean, it's, this has got to be, you know, somewhat of a a signal of a bottom for bonds, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I hope. Long, I listen, we've been talking about it on this show nonstop for, we were, you know, we've been hammering this point home. If anybody that ever watched Taste Trade is short bonds, I would be shocked because we've been talking about, to, you know, it's the best play on the board for, you know, way too, started way too early. Obviously now it's kind of worked out, but, but we started way too early and we got long too early, but that's what happens in overdone moves like that. But there's nobody that can watch this network that's been short bonds. Everybody has to be lo leaning long. Wow. Um, shut, shut you down. <laughs> i mean yeah it's it's been a real uh yeah bonds have been a real tough trade of course for a while if, if you've been long but overall i, I think it's start it's going to start to pay off and this has been really an interesting couple of weeks right like we didn't really have a whole lot of volatility in, in september all of a sudden october got real ugly um but over the last what uh, like over the not seven five days just really this week we got all the the, the fear from the, that that uh, Middle East situation started to kind of normalize, right? And 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 I know people, you know, there's some people out there who really kind of like to equate those things together. But look, after a while, when something's been going on long enough, VIX only can stay but so high so long, and eventually markets sort of, um, you know, push cast cast those fears to the side. And then the rate stuff, man. I mean, this has been an epic move, really, uh, more recently in bonds the last five days. So. Yeah, as that's happened, markets took off. It just happened this week, right, with these big macro data points, and now we're we're sitting uh, in the clear. It seems for now. Amazing. Yep, I agree. Uh, let's move ahead to the next slide. Boom. Got a little Madden for you there. Vol evaporated this week, destroyed. Um, yeah, look, we had a lot of great opportunities for the last couple of days. It was, I know, it was hard for some people to probably pull the trigger, but Look, when you got implied vol ranks of, of 50, 50 plus and, and, and 40s for equities, for SPY, you know, these are the times you got to you got to take some shots. Again, being small, being smart. But I mean, you can't time these things like it's it just happens. Right. And this week it started out slow earlier in the week. We came into the end of the month, 30th, 31st. All of a sudden we get a big move on Wednesday, Thursday and Sue. So. This is why we're always talking about we just pay attention to, to Vol because what we what do we know? This is one of the bigger takeaways, at least from, from one of the stuff that I would say during the master class. We know volatility stays at a low point. We know eventually expands, and then eventually we get the decline, and this was the decline. Mm -hmm. Big big move. Let's move ahead to the next slide. Yields, again, big move to the downside. Um, 
uh the uh the the the, the interesting thing though is, is the uh we saw the uh the 210 spread uh sort of widen out again right uh to some degree obviously because tens fell big time so um what uh out of these what do you expect to to eventually fall the most two tens or thirties well i mean of course the 30 it yields the 30s yeah it, it would seem so it seems to stand that they would probably be the ones to fall the most but been a big move in yields this week and um yeah I'm kind of looking for more, honestly. Let's move ahead to the next slide. This has been the interesting thing, though. Uh, of course, you're seeing it again. I'm pretty sure it still is. Correct me if I'm wrong. But gold has been on the move, uh, which, you know, this is this is what makes uh, sense in some regard. So it was interesting because there's a correlation between 30-year 30 30-year bonds and gold, usually moving the same direction. However, earlier this week, we were seeing a big change, right? We were seeing sort of this decoupling, if you will, of gold and 30-year bonds, similar to what we saw in March. And so I guess my whole point is, is like a, a week doesn't make a trend. I mean, we saw this thing decoupling, but for the most part, these two kind of move in lockstep. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this going forward. Like gold has been moving higher, obviously, because... Um, well, I think most of it has been behind the fears of what's been going on with with overseas, right? With the the the, the conflict over there. I'm interested to see what the next move is in gold. Are you guys trading any gold right now? I very haven't. Small. I've been trying to. Go ahead. Very small. I have a very small position on nothing much. Like futures or or options, you're saying? No, futures options. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's all defined risk. I don't have anything naked in there. Yeah. Um understood uh but it's been i'm curious to, to know what the next move is in gold just because i mean if bonds are going to keep going does that mean gold's going to keep going and they do seem to have um varying correlations at time but for the most part for the better part of this year we've been seeing that that correlation being strong so I'm curious to see what happens here let's move ahead to the next slide this has been a move and i'm curious to see what happens here today too uh for utilities and regional banks. We've seen utilities just get smashed this year because of uh, high interest rates, because a lot of times utilities have big projects going on. They have high debt. Of course, that's no bueno. And then uh, obviously we know what's been going on with, with, uh, with regional banks, which takes me back to March, which I got to bring up for a second. It takes me back last night. This guy got convicted, right? I mean, not convicted, but he got, uh, he hasn't got sentenced yet, but he, he's guilty, right? They found him guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, guilty. Yeah. Yeah. he's, he's going to spend a lot of time, man. He's going to spend a lot of time. He's going to make new friends. Hopefully. How scared are you right now? Like if you're him and you're heading into the big house. He's been in prison for a while now. I don't nah, think he's, he's probably secluded, guy. Tom. I don't think he's with he's the secluded. general. Yeah, you're not right. With the general pop. Yeah, he's not with Gen Pop. Like two Novembers ago, this dude was like on top of the world, heading into the Super Bowl, all of that stuff. Your friends were Brady. You're hanging out with all these people. Last year, it all falls. And his parents, freaking parents, are attorneys, basically. I mean, I know they're 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 professors, but for crying out loud. And then they're, they're, they're three people. His they people, stole three people. They stole a ton of money. His parents stole a ton of money as well. They were living in twenty million dollar, you know, yes, you know, play twenty million dollar condos in the Bahamas. You know, getting paid a million dollars a year for being consultants. I mean, they stole customer funds too. His parents are as guilt, not as guilty as, but but they're guilty of. You know, they're this, just as pregnant, Tom. They're just as pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't give a crap about his parents, yep. and um, I can't believe that if they're still at Stanford. I can't. I don't have no idea what Stanford's doing and why they haven't fired him. Yes. Um, but it's it's yeah, it's just it just shows that there's like you know, crime has no boundaries, and Sam Bankman Fried is you know, he's he 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 should be in the general population. That's what he is. <laughs> It'll be fine. I mean, Bernie Madoff was fine in prison. I mean, you know, I mean, he was they like the, his ass, didn't they? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, I'm thinking no. of Stanford. What's the guy? Stanford, the other guy. Another, the other dude. I forgot his name. It don't matter. These dudes are done. 
No, no. When you're when you're a child molester, you, you that's where you get in trouble. But like, if you're just a white collar criminal who just stole money from crypto, they actually in prison. Like, you know, you're, you're useful because you can you can hack. You know, like you got 20 <laughs> years now to work on hacking schemes in prison. They they, they come up to you and go, uh, listen, I got some uh, illicit funds that I would like to uh, put on the street. Have you got an idea how to do that? Listen, there, there's there's a lot of people in in prison in that, crypto- need, that, that need lessons in in crypto, you know, in money laundering through crypto. He he could be a valuable asset in prison. He could be. <laughs> Let's move ahead to the next slide, John. Last thing on that, yeah, I mean, his three people rolled on him including the girl. So the moral of the story, if you do illegal stuff, don't do it with your girlfriend. Okay. Um, (laughs) Time. Is it, is it, uh, is it time to worry? Look, and this is interesting. There's always, always, the story is always don't crap. Don't crap where you eat or work. Okay? It's true. <laughs> true. Uh, is it is it time to worry? And this is interesting because non-farm payrolls comes in lighter than than expected. This continuing job claims rise for the sixth straight week. Making This is basically saying that it's hard for unemployed people to find jobs. Is this going to be the next shoot a job? Is this the reason why the Fed is pausing? Because they know coming down the pipeline, the situation is about to change for jobs. Bank of Japan, uh, they plan to exit their easy policy in 2024. Yen's at a 33-year low. And, well, big move this morning on the yen because dollar moved down big. Third straight day of a big move in the end. Mm-hmm. Okay, right? Very nice. Yeah. Apple shares, uh, they did fall after hours on declining revenue in China. Who knows what ends up happening today on on uh, after earnings. Disney confirms they're going to have uh, ESPN bet. An ESPN betting situation is going to debut. Interesting. Uh, Disney had an interesting week. They confirmed that that's happening. They also bought the rest of Hulu. So there's a lot going on there with Disney. Uh, mm-hmm. Amazon unveiled a uh, buy now, pay later payment option with uh, a firm. An interesting thing, I think, given where we are in market conditions and people paying for things, et cetera, be able to pay over time now for Amazon. It's for business people, though. And then finally, uh, market measure. Why vol becomes less sensitive as it rises. Check it out. Beautiful. Good job, buddy. We can take a quick 90-second break. We'll come back so we can catch the opening bell next. Thanks, Jamal. Thank you.